Atlanta is a melting pot of cultures and many members of the Afro Latina community say it took them some time to stand strong and embrace their culture. In this Black History Month report, Fox 5's Eric Perry is taking a closer look at this diverse community. When were you able to look into the mirror and confidently be proud of who you are? Well, some people I talked with in the Afro Latino community say they felt as if they were forced to pick sides. It's an and statement, right? I'm Latino and I'm black. What do you see when you look at these two men? And that we are all of one people from the African diaspora. These Morehouse grads say they identify as Afro-Latino and are proud to represent both, but it hasn't always been easy. When I first got here, people just thought I was a light-skinned black man. I remember when I was at, at, a, at the library, a uh, brother came up to me and asked, uh, how did I get my hair to look this way? For us, we had to create our own tribe to fit in there. And, and Luis Negron is the executive director of the 100 Black Men of Atlanta, and his journey started decades ago when his black Puerto Rican father and his white Puerto Rican mother migrated to California. In the community, most people thought they were a black and white couple, as we know, especially during the 50s and 60s. The fact that I grew up in North Oakland, um, where the Black Panther Party was founded, Huey P. Newton went to my high school. So I grew up in the midst of civil rights and that civil unrest. And he tells me it took time to be able to proudly identify and stand strong in both cultures. It's the time for us to have a discussion of what race may look like. I think it's important for us to also have a discussion of what the true spirit and the nature means for us to be able to be sh as shared brothers and sisters. It was just too complicated to explain to people that I'm black and Latino. Joel Alvarado's journey to understanding and pride makes him who he is today. And when Latinos started coming into, uh, into Georgia, into the Southeast, basically they were told to choose a side, right? Are you either going to be with blacks or you're going to be with whites? And it really a lot of it meant was based on how you looked, who you associated with. The two men say sometimes they're still ignorant from the community. Even though we are part of the United States and, I, and I'm an American, I'm fourth generation American, I'm a veteran, but people would still ask me about, oh, you know, how did I get into the country? Or, you know, how uh, did I have a green card? Or, you know, why, you know, I speak English so well. I mean, just all these, you know, microaggressions that they would throw at me. If you look all around Atlanta, there are signs of the longtime impacts from the culture that's all around, like Buford Highway to Sarah Gonzalez Memorial Park, the first park in the state of Georgia named for a Latinx individual. Her story is like many across the country. Was the president uh, and chairwoman of the Georgia Hispanic Chamber. She was um, Afro-Cuban and her story, I mean, um, she came here as an immigrant and, um, and how she um, you know, made her way through here as a businesswoman. We are more alike than dissimilar. I hope that people understand that it's important that you allow for individuals to define who they are as human beings. And what about for those little boys and the little girls who might not feel comfortable in their skin? Believe in themselves, to trust the inner voice in their gut, in their heart. They are beautiful. They, they are talented. Afro-Latino is a blessing because it allows me to to be a part of two communities that have such a rich history, rich culture. Eric Perry, Fox 5 News.